Hello and welcome to Mastermind. Our mission is to build million dollar businesses so that we can have financial freedom, time for our families and make an impact in our communities. Kick it off with some big wins, Daryl. My name is uh, Daryl Mendiola. I own uh, Watermark Painting and Drywall. I'm in North Central Oklahoma. Started in uh, 1999 um, with uh, just myself and a welfare check every month. And six months later, called the government, said, I don't need your assistance. Now I have four employees, three trucks running around and not in the field working hardly at all. Um, so that's been really cool. Big wins, going camping. So we're scheduled to leave tomorrow. We're actually going to be leaving today. And so that was just really cool to be able to just leave early. The whim of, of running a smooth, smooth-ish business. My crew is handling all the jobs or handling the customers or handling getting checks been able to do that and also had my first stay interview last week. I might discuss that in our top of mind if we have time, but it went really well. Um, learn a lot more on a stay interview than you think. So it went really well. Fantastic. That's awesome, Daryl. Thank you. All right, Isaac. Hi, I am Isaac Mama and I own White Oak Painting in Southeast Iowa. Been at it for about six years. And my big wins are I'm finally getting my van built out. I've been just operating with totes for the last five months as I got a new van. And so my father-in-law's helping me build out a drawer system that's going to change the game for me, staying organized. And got my Monday job application form filled out and I'm getting the applicants rolling in. So calling through those, I'm going to start setting up interviews this week. So hopefully we'll be getting some good guys brought on to the team here in the next few days. So. Yes, sir. Okay, right on. Rich, good morning. Good morning, guys. Sorry about that. Hey. My name's Rich Warner, and I'm up here in Northeast uh, Pennsylvania. My big wins this week are we have beautiful weather. It's going to be 90-some degrees this week. Uh, got one step closer to my new building. I know I'm always talking about this new building, but um, the demolition is uh, going to be stated to start here pretty soon, maybe within the next month of my old building. So that's a big win for me. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it is awesome. That's pretty much it. We got looking at some good jobs this week. Sun shining. Life is good. There we go. Right on. Awesome. Thank you, Rich. Craig. My name is Craig Armstrong. I operate Cam Painters in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So I'm a fellow foreigner. Welcome, Samuel. Yeah, my business has been, I've been in business since 2000, over 20 years now, and I've got four employees and Still doing a little work in the field myself, but uh, most of the painting jobs, the, the crew is able to handle. And then I handle uh, some of the wallpaper installations outside of that. And big wins are, you know what, the crews, yeah, the crews chewing up work and making clients happy. <clears throat> yeah, so that's my big win. We're, we're getting some more Google reviews. Yes, fantastic. Right on. Thank you. Hey, Zeus. Good morning. Uh, my name is Jesus with Garcia Painting. I've been in business for about four years. We do interior, exterior painting. And uh, my big win here is working with a customer I haven't seen for four years. So that's always good. Makes me happy to work with customers I worked with in the past. I also did tell him that price was different then than now. And he still hired us. So it's good. It's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. My big win there. Okay. That's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Sonia. Good morning. I'm Sonia Garcia with Palatable Painting in San Antonio, Texas. And I've been in a business about um, five years, but three three years consistently. And so I was not in the field, just here and there. So I had this wonderful crew to help me develop and learn the business side of the industry. So it's been a wonderful game changer. And wins are, it's for me, it's always like an up and down thing, but the wins I have is I'm starting to book up my get to August for bookings right now. So that's, that's actually a good win. Yeah. Fantastic. Way to go, Sonia. Thank you. All right, Samuel, again, welcome. That's my 11. Quick intro and big wins, please. Thank you. And first of all, nice to meet you. All of you guys. My name is Samuel and I'm from Finland. I own half of the painting company. So we are 50-50 with my friend and we do interior and exterior work here in Finland. And big wins now is that I'm getting a vacation. So <laughs> that's a huge thing. Yeah, vacations are good. They're needed. 
Especially after all the hard work you've been putting on. So fantastic. Thank you. All right. One thing. What's the one thing we could brainstorm to help you to double your business faster, Daryl? Yeah, actually, I have a small one, and, and Craig might actually be able to help on this one. I, I just this year is my first year of doing vacation. I know, Craig, don't you guys have to do vacation, or is that Australia? Uh, I get all you people. You people. <laughs> I thought Canada, maybe it's Australia. But anyways, I'm doing a week vacation, and right now what I'm doing to keep track of it is it's really sad. I, on Clock Shark, I have a job name just called Vacation. And so I know how many time I know how many days people have when I go and look at the job name on Clock Shark. I don't really have. I can't go into my system. How many vacation days do I have, or how many hours do I have? Um, I don't have a system for that, and I don't have a system for accruing vacation. This year, I just gave everybody a flat one week. Um, but I sure would like to progress that a little bit further next year. And then make it based upon their hours or days. I'm not trying to get too technical, but I don't know if anybody's got any ideas on that. I'm just trying to get a little better at it. Just if you're curious, what the Canadian government requires you to do for payroll is, or I guess Ontario, because it's provincial, is put an extra 4% on every paycheck. And that goes, that's called vacation, vacation pay, like whether they actually take vacation or not they get that extra 4% because when you total it up at the end of the year, it, it equals like an extra week's worth of pay for somebody that works full time. Yeah. I didn't realize. So that's how it's done here. So we don't really um, do hours. It's like an added percentage on top of the mm -hmm. wage. Yeah. You guys are weird though, but it's okay. I still <laughs> love you. <laughs> You're correct about Australia, though, Daryl. If so, he, he they have to give four weeks paid vacation. Yeah, Darryl, I didn't realize it's four weeks. What I'm doing yeah. is, if I've got like a lower level apprentice type guy on, I'll start him out with a week, and then the upper level guys, I call one of my positions craftsman. That's a really good painter, just below the ability to do crew leader. Them and the crew leader, I do two weeks. And then I use QuickBooks Time, which was previously T-Sheets. And you can really easily keep track of all the paid time off. And then they can request time off. And then it gives you a notification. You hit proof. And then it just shows up on the time entries, PTO. And it's really easy to manage how much they've used. And so I don't know if... Clock Shark does that or not? I haven't really looked into Clock Shark on that. We just didn't know if there was a different, if there was an actual program to be used. I don't have an issue with the way I'm doing it now, but if I get more employees or more vacation days and stuff, I just want to make sure I'm not lost in my brain on it. For so, sure. But yeah, I think I'm the only, oh, I am the only painter in, in my entire, within a hundred miles that I know of that does anything like vacation PTO or anything. I'm doing way different than a lot of others, but yeah. yeah. So it's actually the vacation is one thing that's brand new to me, but I did give, I gave my guy vacation time uh, just last week. He had a, he had an illness that came up last minute and I just, I let him do his vacation pay. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of just for you guys. Uh, I don't like, I don't like sick days that much only because yeah, I don't feel like coming in work. I'm sick. <laughs> I don't, I have a good crew. I, I don't think they would do that, but you just never know with anybody coming on later or whatever, but I would like to do some, some additional, some time, like maybe another three or four days a year for unexpected, but I don't know how that's going to work yet. So I'm still working on that, but that gives me some heads up. I'll look into, into, into my clock shark a little bit better, knowing that there's not like some massive cool program out there that is just all organized. I don't know how like municipalities and all that do that because they, they keep track of everything, but they have lots of big systems going on. I don't need that. I just want to make sure I know. If I go into Clock Shark, all I do is type in vacation and I know who's got what right there. So is anybody else doing vacation? No? Okay. All right. Thank we you. We have the same. We have the same system as Canadians. Or there's actually two opportunities. You can just pay extra in every salary or a painter can take three to four weeks paid vacation every year. Sounds so, good. Yeah. But we do that. We just pay and 
to negotiate that three times. Yeah. Good to have you here, Sammy. Isaac. Yeah. So I'm wondering how much to niche down my offerings. I know that every time you do a different type of painting, it changes up the process for the guys. And so it's most beneficial to just have a repeatable system. And I'm wondering, basically, we've got a new paint system down for cabinets and mm -hmm. it's working really good and the product is awesome. And I'm just wondering as we start bringing on more guys, because I've got one guy that is, I don't know, he's got some back issues right now. So I'm having him work a lot less while he does physical therapy and mm -hmm. he's going to come back full time, maybe in six months or so. But he did, he's done really great with cabinets. And I'm just wondering going forward, even though we've got a good system for it, is it more beneficial mm -hmm. to just say only interior, exterior repaints, or do we keep cabinets on even if we only do six to 10 a year? Or is, because I just keep hearing different people say, don't even incorporate cabinets at all unless you're doing like, I don't know, like, at least two kitchens every month or more. What do you guys think? I can tell you cabinets, I don't do them a whole lot. I do cabinets, but I do them on my time. I'll fit them in when I want and not when I have to. So yeah. I've got a guy that I bid on a $7,000 cabinet job for four months ago. And he approached my guy and said, hey, I think I'm ready to start that. And I'm, I'm going to call him up and say, thank you. We're probably going to be looking at December before I could do it. For me, I don't want to do any kitchen cabinet jobs this summer because we are so slammed with exteriors. Yeah. It's okay to do cabinets if it's something that you can do and you can make money on. I would absolutely do it. I know Steve didn't do cabinets, but he was he had a good niche out there with the Florida houses that he was working on. For me, I'll do cabinets, but it's not something that I want to do a lot of because I spend a little bit more time in the field on cabinets than I would any other job. But I'll still do them, but I also will make sure that Anybody who's less than an A client, I won't even paint a kitchen cabinet for me because I'm busy with other things. Anything less than an A plus client is negative for me. So yeah. that's just how I roll. I set my standards higher with, with cabinets. I think the there's a difference between doing standalone cabinets versus you're in a house, you're doing it already, and they want to add in a vanity. Like I, I think that's a profitable add-on versus the setup and takedown for like just doing somebody's cabinets and that's it. I think it could still be something that you offer, but but not not promoted just just as a little add-on for people's places who you're already in. Just my two cents on that. Yeah. So this is really good. I agree with everything that's been shared. Just to clarify, we I did not want like the math didn't pencil out for me to have a shop to do cabinets and i really didn't like spraying up creating a spray booth in their garage to do it either it's just and moreover i just the, the liability is much higher in cabinets than it is just cutting and rolling a wall or painting an exterior mm -hmm. and so i didn't have to uh, hire mm -hmm. and train the level of quality for a painter that it took to securely paint a cabinet to do it well to provide a great experience and to put all that liability at ease. When I focused on mainly exterior residential repaints in Florida, we could do it all year. We, we did interior too, but it was just far less liability and much simpler to grow. Now, what I say do and don't do it, I like, I agree with Daryl, pre-qualified much harder, only A and A plus clients. If it's something you want to do also, if you're not booked out, then we have to take it on if we need the work. So I wouldn't say no if we didn't have any work. Because in the beginning, we say yes to everything until we get booked out. It's, it's part of earning our stripes. But once we're booked out, then you have the liberty to be more selective, if that right. makes sense. But the one thing I would caution against, and I've worked with a lot of companies and they've got these shops for cabinets. And the tough thing is doing cabinets, are, it's a it's cool to do cabinets. They have a shop to do cabinets. But when you look at the math, it's just a much simpler process to not have the shop, not have the liability, and to just cut holes some walls and just sell as many of those as you can. Yeah, definitely. I got this 10 by 10 room that mm -hmm. goes up like you would at like a farmer's market with four walls. Mm -hmm. And 
got the fan blowing and don't have any overspray stuff and got the paint line shelving thing and Centurion mm-hmm. Wood Coatings products and it's going on really well. I've done, I taught my guys how to do two and then now they've done three completely on their own, even somewhere we're filling wood grain or changing the drawer holes and I didn't have to go do anything and they turned out great. And so, it's, okay, they I, they can do it. I don't have to jump back in the field for them if I've got the guys. So that's nice, but I just didn't know as far as switching up the processes. Or, oh, we're doing walls, cabinets, exterior, yeah, exterior, exterior cabinets. Yeah, um, it's tough. What some guys will do is they'll keep a cabinet crew. Everybody else will be walls and exteriors, and then they'll keep a cabinet crew. Okay. If they can turn over enough cabinets, that makes sense too. Now, okay. something else to consider, right? We want to play the long game. So as we're scaling... The time and effort it took you to train these guys mm-hmm. versus a new crew training them your exterior system or your interior repaint system, right? That. Yeah. And then also the level of character and responsibility that needs to be there for cabinets because the liability is higher. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so will this scale? Yeah, that's no. a good question. Okay. No, that's super good. Appreciate yeah. it. And I'm not saying don't. I just want you to be aware of everything that's involved, right? And yeah. so maybe you can keep this cabinet crew going while you build up some interior and exterior crews. I like it. Yeah. Rich, how can we help you become rich Er, I have some uh, new guys in the area, new kids on the block, I'm calling them. A couple of them are some heavy. Who remembers new kids on the block? <laughs> okay. <laughs> now the young guys, are, what are they talking about? It's the so, first boy know, band. Yeah. The boy band. A couple of them are heavy hitters. They're really advertising and they're really getting at it. And mm-hmm. since I've been in business about 18 years, it's I've kind of laxed on, not that I've laxed on advertising, but not as advertising as say, but I don't do as much on Facebook anymore. I'm not, I don't know mm-hmm. what, mm-hmm. how, how to go about that, but <clears throat> should I actually do it like an advertising bomb? Should I put up more yard signs? Should I, should I do more Facebook posts? Should I do this? Should I do that? The ABAs, I yes. ABAs. Yeah. Wait for it. You ready? Yeah. Bam. Do this, buddy. Do this. You will crush it. So so what's that mean? Networking. Yes. Make sure you have your website conversion funnel locked in and then just crush all those ABAs. And you won't have to post an advertisement. You won't need it. And you will get so many high value referrals. Yeah. They come back saying, your, your problem will be, I need to hire more guys. I need to hire more guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm still, you know, I'm getting my fair share of the pie, but I've noticed things have slowed down a little bit. But I don't know. I just wondered, I, I guess maybe I'm jealous because everybody's getting the recognition and this and that. I don't know. But, well, but, it sounds like they're hustling. So yeah, they're, they're hustling. Out hustling, right? Just out hustling. Where, so it comes back to the fundamentals. Where are you networking? What ABAs are you executing? Yeah. And then step nine, what are you doing to stay top of mind to your customer list as well? Yeah, I, I have been doing most of that. So I'm, I'm calling, I'm talking to people. I don't know. Okay. I'm just, How many BNI meetings have you hit this month? How many rotary meetings have you hit this month? Well, How many chamber I, meetings have you hit this I, month? Which ABAs have you launched? Yeah, I do. I do my, my Masonic Lodge. I'm not a, in the, the BNI at all. I probably should be. After 18 years, you'd think I would be. But yeah, yeah that's something. Well, that Rich, I'll tell you, I've been in business since 1999. The things that you did to get in business or not the things that we're doing now to stay in business because things have changed. I did yard signs. I'm still doing yard signs, but I I didn't do rotary. I didn't do networking. Um, I didn't do branding the way I do now. Yeah. And, and culture. So we have to be doing things that other people are not doing. That's one thing that I've, cause I I get that same way, Rich, cause I see these other guys out there. They're like busier than I am, but I'm making good money and I'm not working in the field. So let them work a hundred hours a week for less money and getting the C clients out of my pond. <laughs> and so that's where I sat with that. Cause I had yeah. one guy that he posted on his Facebook that he got a new truck and it was, it's a really nice truck because I don't care. I'm going to work my tail off. I'm work all these hours just to bang it. And I'm like, I, I don't want to do that at all. I'll let him do that. He could take all them C clients for me. Mm-hmm. So Mm -hmm. Rich, let me bring this home real quick. What Daryl's saying is that the traditional advertising attracts C clients, right? Because they're throwing out discounts and anything else. What we're trying to show you and what Daryl's trying to convey is that this system attracts high value referrals. 
see seen everybody that. nodding their head. They're like, yeah. no, okay. absolutely. No, I've seen that. I know. I, and okay. I know that, but it's, it's more of the, like you said, I don't know if it's a, a jealousy thing or, or I feel left out of the, out of a limelight or I, I don't know. So, so yeah, yeah, you should be using yard signs too. Yard signs are great for branding. Just top of mind yes. awareness and branding. They're not really lead gen. You'll get some, but it's more about branding and staying top of mind. Same thing with your vehicle, excuse me, logo on your vehicle and branded shirts. Everything shows professionalism and branding. But when it mm -hmm. comes to generating high value referrals, networking, ABAs, and staying top of mind are the three avenues for that. Now, these guys out advertising, it's actually a good thing because they're going to attract all the C clients who won't be bothering you. Perfect. But there's a way to attract the A clients, right? So when I need my lawn done or when I need some plumbing or electrician, I don't go to Google. I, I talk to my friends in my circles and I say, hey, there are some guys in my uh, Bible study group. I'll say, hey, I need X, Y, Z. Who do you recommend? Mm -hmm. And they tell me and that's it. I don't call anybody else. Yeah. I, I, I have them out. I, I get a price and I hire them. <clears throat> hey, Rich. Yeah. So something that I've been thinking about a lot lately is even though I'm in my community easily doing the most as far as community involvement and I'll just say like advertising even though I'm trying to just follow the system I'll just call that advertising there was this picture somebody brought to mind that I'll bring to mind for you and see if you can translate over in the sense of feeling jealous see that guy mm -hmm. looking at Michael yeah. Felt I've seen it. Photo. see how that Michael Felt awesome. is just looking forward <laughs> not looking at his competition just look forward and crush it dude don't even pay attention to him yeah Thank you. All right, yeah. right on. And any questions you have, use the chat. You know, yeah, use, uh, absolutely, use, Rich. Use use the group me chat. That's what we're all here for, buddy. All right, perfect. Thank you. All right, your first action is going to be join BNI, right? Yeah, I'm, I wrote it down on my list. But we'll put it okay. up. We'll put it on my <laughs> to -do list. Right on. Awesome. All right, Canada's caffeinated painter. You know what? Just a little bit of accountability I needed from the group to enforce some discipline on the painters. There's been a couple of issues with just clocking in uh, in Clock Shark and just making sure that hours are correct and up to date on Clock Shark. So I need to, yeah, I need to get on that uh, painter for that and make sure that I've spoken to him, like verbally spoken to him. I was going to send a follow up email with our conversation detailed which is what i should have but now it's been yeah i just got busy and it's been probably about a week since i had the conversations i don't know whether the follow-up email would land the same way as if i did it right after talking to him and also what our newest team member lead is thinking that she's not really pulling her weight and yeah and, and just yeah he's yeah, there, there's just a few issues that he's had with her and he's sent an email around to me and I need I need a, a little bit of accountability to now that the email sent to actually confront this employee with with just getting her to upper attitude and upper production. So mm -hmm. there, it's a little bit to do with attitude and it's a little bit to do with production. Mm -hmm. Like just mm -hmm. she's just not hustling as much as the crew lead wants her to okay are you using the progressive disciplinary procedure that's what i want to do so it's, it's always the answer okay go ahead so i've got it in writing from the crew lead he sent me an email with all the things that he was upset with her about and he still likes working with her and he still thinks that she can easily improve and they can work everything out and and move forward it's just, yeah, at this point, it's, I need to address it verbally. And mm -hmm. then after that, I'll send an email, which documents everything. Yeah. Okay. I just forwarded you the email. I had written an email just summarizing it. So just so it's fresh for you. It's also laid out in the employee handbook, but there's, yeah, there's always a fear. So let's, we can address the psychological element of it. There's always a fear that if we execute it, that we're going to lose them. They're going to get offended and storm off. Usually what happens is we give them a verbal, they go, whoa, all right, and you let them know this document, written warning. And that's when we're really afraid that they're going to leave. What happens is they do an about face. They go, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I did not realize 
the severity of this or, or, or how bad it was or whatever, whatever the reaction might be. And they do a 180. Not only that, but like they let the rest of the crew know, hey, don't, this is serious. Don't, whatever they're doing. And it's awesome. And so one of the best things you can do is give somebody a written warning because it gives them an about face. And now we remember the lesson from We're Less Stupid, right? Sonia just read that. In chapter seven, culture, you get what you tolerate. Mm-hmm. And so the, the the faster we curb this, the stronger our culture is. So, you mean these problems just don't go away by themselves? Oh, <laughs> darn. Not if there's, not if there's people involved. <laughs> oh, the dang humans. <laughs> Yeah, when those now when those AI Life robots be easy come out, without the humans. <laughs> but and you want to, so we want to do it. It's I don't want to be mean to them. Well, if 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 we don't hold the line, right, then we're being mean to our team and our customers because everybody else is affected. But it's so powerful when you when you get to a point where you sit down and you explain, okay, you're at step two. This is a written warning. Step three is uh, a few days or a week off, and step four is when you're like, oh man, I certainly don't want that. So let's make sure that this doesn't happen again. And, and you walk with them, help them to understand. And they just do an about face. They go, oh my goodness. I had no idea it was that bad. I'm so sorry. It'll never happen again. And then the rest of the team know new people come on. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And it protects the culture. So Craig, I, I have I, a quick question, Craig. Do you, when things are initially brewing, just little issues before they come big, do you give your, your crew lead the, the power to, to address those issues with you not being involved? Great question. Because I would suggest it highly because it it gets you hands off and it makes it very awkward when your crew leader goes to you with a problem with a guy that they're watching and then you got to go address the problem. You don't even know what's going on. You're a little bit disconnected. Yeah, that's uh, the situation. So I've I've had the crew leads report to me if there's anything to deal with their subordinates. Yeah, I would suggest let giving your crew leads the power if you can trust. If you have a crew lead, you should be able to trust them. But I, my my new guy that I've had working for about a month and a half, I don't talk to him at all unless it's how's life, how are you doing, what's going. I don't ask him anything. I noticed yesterday my team lead let him paint some window sashes, which he shouldn't have done. He got paint, he blew out the glass. I mean, we're scraping it anyways, but he went a little bit too far. I didn't mm. tell the new guy. I'm like, man. That's stupid. No, I told my team left, hey man, let's not let him do windows. This will take him twice as long to clean that off. And he's okay. And I was hands off. And now my team lead's gonna address all those things. So I haven't handled a discipline issue on a anybody other than a crew lead in quite a while. So you would give them authority to verbally warn the employee yes, and, I, and I would. do written warning warnings to that employee? Absolutely. That's leadership. In cool. fact, I would go through Maxwell's five levels of leadership with your lead. It is right yep. there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a small book and it's one, it's the best book on leadership that I've ever read. It is hands down. And it's not even a book. It's more like a field manual. That should yeah. be called a workbook because yeah, it's just, it's pure awesome. It's more like a workbook. It's not something you read about a bunch of analogies. It's an actual workbook working you through the beliefs and habits of every level of leadership and to help them to see and then to recognize at what level they are with each person is powerful. Mm. All right. Real quick, Greg, are, is your person doing the clock shark wrong out of malice or? Forgetfulness. And yeah, I guess the way that I've set it up is it's not locked down. They can go in and edit their sheets. And perhaps that's that was a bad decision from the beginning, but I just... I realize human nature, I trust them to do their hours correct. It's just if I didn't have the, give them the ability to edit their timesheets, like I'd be editing them constantly. Yeah, yeah I asked because I was running into that and it was super annoying. It was like, I was having to look back at texts, like who said they forgot? And I didn't know if that was a disciplinary thing or not, because I've never brought that up. So that's good to hear. Yeah. And the one guy, it's gotten to the point where I go in to do hours for payroll and half his timesheets are missing. And I need to like text him and say, put your hours in timesheets so I can pay you. Unless you just want me to pay you for 20 hours this week. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's been the issue. Yeah. One one real quick thing, because I know we went a little bit long, but on, on Clock Shark for their time, I set it up where only admin can change their time because 
when if they know they can go back, this is what I've ran into. When they know they can go back and fix their time in the week, they become a little less reliable on that. So when they know they have to reach out to me to fix their time for yesterday, they start to learn. And I've had very few issues with my guys for getting the clock out now that they have to actually reach out to me and say, hey, man, I forgot to clock out yesterday or I didn't clock in at 730 when I got there. I don't let them go back in and change their time because it makes it a little embarrassing on their end to have to reach out to me to tell me that they forgot to do something with clock chart. Yeah. 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 That might be something that I have to do. I think you um, need to. Yeah. That, that's a, it'll the hold next, them more the accountable. Stuff. Yeah. It'll hold them accountable. Cool. Thank you. All right. Right on. Hey, Seuss. Hey, Steve. So everyone, I have no lead as of now, team lead, because he's leaving next Friday. And uh, he's really important in our team. He's been really good. I'm proud of him. But last Wednesday, he sent me a message that he needed to clear some things out. And this kind of happened last summer. I told Steve uh, he was going through some depression, too much pressure outside running crews and handling all that other stuff he has to handle. And then he told me that he feels really stressed out. He feels lost. So I called him and I told him, you know what? It sounds like you don't have a passion and you're not focused. So I'm just going to let you go here. And then he said, no, I can, let me finish strong. And I thought about it and I was like, I respect everything you've done for the company. So I'll give you two weeks. So he's gone next Friday. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure that was too nice. I should have just let him go, but he is working hard. He's finishing strong as he said he is. So mm -hmm. now I'm looking for a team lead. I am training one of my guys. So that's the solution. And I am pushing forward out there, trying to stay hiring top of mind. And I'm going to push even harder this week for hiring top of mind. But other than that's been my challenge right there. Yeah. I don't think you were too nice because if you've got a good character in your guy, I've had that happen a time or two where I've let someone go for whatever reason, not, nothing moral issues, but letting them finish it out is fine. I don't see an issue with that at all. But again, that five levels of leadership, I think you should read that with your team or even pay them an hour a week and let them read one chapter a week and mm -hmm. then sit down. I know this takes a long time, Jesus, but Taking an employee out to lunch and sitting down and chatting, you get so much more out of it than sitting down in your office or on the job site or in your truck. So that way, if your guy's even up for the task, the, my crew lead that I have right now, he was never on my radar for team lead until mm -hmm. I fired my team lead about four months ago. And something happened. My Will, who I have now, he just did a complete 180 on everything. And this guy is now, like I say, he's collecting checks. He's meeting with clients. He's setting things up. Mm -hmm. So I think, and honestly, I'm, I need to go over five levels of leadership with him too, but he's so new in a leadership. I didn't get that far yet, but I'm going to, but yeah, just grooming somebody to, to take on that role and make sure that their heart's in it. Because you definitely just the first level of leadership is a uh, positional leadership. And that's the worst leader there is because he's somebody who's in authority because you've placed him there. He's not earned his right with the rest of the crew and you want to get him from there to the next level. And so that's what you, the, the mindset of your crew leader, potential crew leader needs to understand. You're not a leader because I put you here. I want you to, I want you to earn that. And you got to want it. So mm -hmm. that's what I have to say. No, thank you, Daryl. I appreciate it. And that is one thing I do with my leads. Every month we go over a book together. Then I also have a 30 minute time with them as well, too. Good. Sit down and talk to them. But it's funny because I just gave him the five levels of leadership and now he's I'm now I have to let him go. <laughs> but he's been a good leader. He's a but hey, it's an investment for really the next guy. Good, he's been a really good leader. I'm proud of him. I got nothing bad to say about him, but this passion yeah. it wasn't there and I need people with passion to move the team forward. I do start people with the goal giver book on my, my leads. I feel like the goal giver is really important because if they come with just the ambition just to get the money, it doesn't work here. You need to be a goal giver. But uh, yeah, I remember when Steve first told me about that book. So it's my favorite. Mm -hmm. We're both hanging out together. <laughs> what was the issue again? I didn't quite follow. Just he doesn't have as much passion as he used to. Last summer, Isaac, he was dealing with depression and uh, anxiety. 
handling the crew, dealing with customers, reporting production to me, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I stayed patient with him. I told Steve about it last summer too. And Steve told me maybe he's not leadership material. Yeah, that could be true. But I felt like he was just going through some episodes with depression. I stayed patient. He went, he followed through. This summer, he, he told me again, he felt confused. And he just feels like his, that he wouldn't be able to produce as he has because he feels like his passion is just not really there because of his depression. And he yeah. feels lost. So I just told him, it seems like it's not going to work out. So let's just call it good. And he told me if I can just give him more time. So that's what I did. I gave him more time and he's out there looking for work. Yeah. So was it pretty mutual or is he like really bummed to leave you guys? He was a little, he seemed a little bummed, but at the same time relieved because I feel like it was my, it's my fault. And this is a good opportunity for me to learn that Steve knows is that I overschedule myself and I can imagine how burned out he felt going to two jobs in a day or three jobs and trying to move the jobs forward. So I feel like it was my fault too for burning him out, especially with his depression. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Very good. But you know what to do, brother. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah. So I was like, okay, I got here, I got everything answered. Thank you guys. So I, I was okay, I've got the ABA thing, you know, that the little cups, right? That are going across. Okay. And because I, oh man, I cringe on social media. I'm like, ah, I hate. So it's like Are you great on the news? I cringe. I know. <laughs> I've got all the little cups up top there too. So when you see that, that's your reminder of all the ABAs. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I just to, because it's been, I understand you, Rich, totally. I feel FOMO myself, I'm afraid of missing out because of, oh man, everybody's going to win. I have, or that, that Miss Congeniality, that the Blondie, what's her name? What's your favorite season or what's your favorite date? So anyways, she was Nobody saying Nobody in here better relate to what that was. I, it's what I feel, I you know, as far as I get the same thing, I'm not watching these people and yeah, the Facebook ads, never doing that ever again. That's what kind of drained my capital for like the past couple of months and then so right now I'm really trying to get out of myself I'm I went door to door I haven't been able to go out as I had to hit 35 doors hit talked to seven people it's like it's a win two out of the um, seven people two of them were like all right but it was a little I didn't get anything out of them yet but I can't say oh it doesn't work because that was only like second time or third time that I've ever done it but the networking so I'm in BNI that one's been progressive for me but I guess my main thing is okay I don't I'm not in the field right Time-wise, Monday through Friday, what would it, what should I ideally be doing? I, I know I've heard it over and over, but I get all mixed up in myself. So it's okay. Yeah. Three things, three things. You should be networking, sales, and recruiting. I think you need to do a daily audit too for a week or two. At least, yeah, yeah. three days. It's just something that could feel overwhelming. Yeah. So I agree with Daryl. Usually I go for three days, a daily audit for three days. And just it'll be, yeah, it'll be a self-realization of, wow, look at all this busy work I'm doing that you know, I could group or delegate. And when you say daily audit, like of what I'm doing on the networking sales and recruiting? I'm no, the, the way, and Steve might have a different way, but what I do from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, um, mm. I write down everything I do, the time, and I don't let, I don't let there be any um, empty 15 minute intervals. If a task takes you an hour and a half, just write seven to eight 30. But don't ever let anything throughout your day be more than 15 minutes of dead time in there. So that way you keep track of what you're doing. For me, my, my, my schedule is so variant. I, that's why I would I, I do a week for me because I don't I do so many different things throughout the week. But I find out there's things I could be delegating, things that I should not be doing. You don't realize you're on Facebook as much as you are. But when you write it down. When you're writing down from 8.15 to 8.30, I was Facebooking. No big deal. But you got two or three times on your day, but well, you got an hour on Facebook that you noticed. It's just an accountability thing. But don't let 15 minutes go by without being written down what you've done in that time. Oh, boy. <laughs> it'll, be a, it'll be a mirror to your life. It'll change Love your that. life. No, that's excellent. Okay. That's pretty much it. Is, oh, my gosh. I need to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Awesome. All right. Okay. So, I do this. Uh, for sake of time. Oh, go ahead, Samuel. Yeah. So I do the same with the Google Calendar. So I track down everything what I do, and of course, if it's possible, try to plan ahead as much as possible and 
plan those customer meetings and everything. Thank you. Samuel, you're up. Yeah, actually, I have a quite similar question than previous one. But yes, we are about to finish the first year of our business, the first fiscal year of our painting <clears throat> business. And now we have to set up goals for the next fiscal year. And it's the goals we are going after. They are quite new. You haven't done before doubling your business. You haven't done it before. What are the best ways to focus on right things when things are going well? I don't know. Did you catch it? So that is, these are good questions, but they're general, right? Mm. If we were to open this up in a silo, you would probably get unique advice from every one of us because it was so general. Okay. So if I heard you correctly, we're looking at the large business, which uh, that's got a nice ring to it I like that. And it's a new territory. So what do we focus on? First thing I would do is fill out the DYB scoreboard. And if you don't have a copy, you can get a copy in the cafe. It's a Google sheet and you go across row C and fill out all your revenue targets, right? Your goals, projections, and then go down actually row three and then go down column C and fill out all your goals. And those are your leading indicators, right? So it's easy to track lagging indicators, sales and revenue, but leading indicators, those are the efforts that we need to put in to achieve the goal. So we put in our leading indicators. What you do is compare that to what you did last year. And so if we went to, I'm just going to throw some examples. If we went to uh, four networking meetings a month and we want to double, what does that mean? Go to eight. eight. Go to eight. Yeah. And so that's what the scoreboard does. It shows you that data and you say, okay, I did this and we hit that, right? So now if we want to double that, then we just need to at least double these efforts down here. And so if you go down the scoreboard, which is basically the entire system, just unpack into a great big scoreboard and just start entering in all of those leading indicators. And we get leads and lags from 4X, 4, 4L execution, X, oh, I forget the name of the book now. You don't have to read it. It's a corporate book. It's a dry book. But it just basically talks about uh, four Ds of execution. That's it. It's one of those corporate books that I read for you so that you don't have to. <laughs> leading and lagging <laughs> indicators. Yeah. Everybody focuses on the lagging indicators of sales, but it's all the efforts that we need to track. The, the leading indicators. And so I would download the Google Sheet, the scoreboard, and put your projections across the top under revenue, and then go down column C and enter all of your leading indicators and then compare them to what you did last year. Now, don't fret when you go through it. You, you might think for the first time since you're new, you're like, I haven't done uh, much of this at all. Good news. That means those are all brand new opportunities for you. And it should be that much easier for you to double. That's good. I will um, and load it and do it okay. on vacation. And yes. <laughs> it's When you are uh, in the busy week and reacting stuff it's always difficult to do something creative and think about the long vision so mm -hmm. it's good to step back take some vacation and mm -hmm. just dive in the dreams yeah 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 it is even today we can go on vacations I, i'm always up early and so i sneak in a jam session almost every morning before everybody else wakes up and business planning and strategizing and trying to be creative. And so I get that. Any other thoughts for Samuel, guys? No, I think he's on a good track there. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Right on. All right. It's time to roll out with takeaways. Daryl, lead the way. Yeah, just uh, listening to all of our situations here just reminds me of how big is our leadership cup? Got to grow. We Self-growth, Zig Ziglar, Jim Rohn. Brian Tracy, just some things I want to get back into. And like I said, a few weeks ago, one of our masterminds, we want to be somebody we want to work for. So a question I've been asking myself a lot lately is what I want to work for me. And I just, that's really been hitting on me. Do what I work for me. We all think contractors, we all think we're great, but when we take a step outside of ourselves and look at ourselves, what would you work for you? And so that's what I have written down again. This is like the third time this year I've written it down. What I work for me, because it makes me want to change and be better. So that's my take. That's awesome. Thank you, Daryl. Isaac? Networking, sales, recruiting, daily audit. I need to really hit the scoreboard. I'm going to do that mm. this week. And cabinets, only A clients, and mm -hmm. only if they're very profitable. 
Yeah, so I like that. Awesome. And then the mantra of the scoreboard is you master what you measure. So fantastic. Yeah. Rich? Oh, I've got highlighted B. Michael Phelps that really yeah. hit home. So thank you, man. That was big. For sure. Yeah. I'm going to be doing a time audit on myself, too. Looking, going to be going back into the DYB system. It's been quite a few years since I've even looked into any of that. I'll be doing, probably looking into a BNI, too, Steve. So Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Glad you're rich. Right on. Thank you for sharing. Craig? I will be doing some progressive discipline this, this week. Okay. There you go. Hold the line. Yes. Hold the line. Protect that culture. Way to lead. That is leadership. Hey, Seuss. Yes, I'll train on my next lead, and I like to audit, transfer, and fill. Working on that. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Sonia? Networking sales recruiting, daily, time daily audit, scoreboard jam session. Key. Yeah. Session. yeah. Awesome. Right on. Thank you. And Samuel, takeaways, please. I will find it by the five levels of leadership book. Read it on this vacation and uh, then fill out the Excel sheet scoreboard system. So I'm knowing what I'm going after for the next year. Right on. Awesome. So glad you're here. And again, welcome. It's a pleasure and honor to have mm -hmm. you from uh, Finland. We've had him from uh, England and Australia, plenty from Australia and where else? Ireland, England. And we've got some members in the cafe from Africa too. They don't ever speak up or they're in the community, but we've got some members from uh, the continent. <laughs> Africa. In fact, one guy joined from Nigeria. I'm like, yes, we finally made a dollar off the Nigerian prince. <laughs> right now, I'm only kidding. I never met him. I don't know who he is. It was just fun to see somebody from Nigeria come through. But Finland, how cool. It's such an honor, Samuel. And you pronounce it Samuel? Yes, Samuel. So my son's name is Samuel. And as a nickname, we call him Samuel. So that's pretty neat. Um, didn't know it was a Finland pronunciation, but now We'll uh, pretend like we planned it all along. So thank you for that, yes. Samuel. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. All right, lady and gentlemen, I want to encourage you to do exactly what it says behind Sonia. Dream big, hustle smarter. You've got this. Yeah. Have a great day, everybody. See you guys. See you guys. See you next time. See you guys. Nice to meet you, Samuel. Nice to meet you.